Uh, sorry, yeah, just go. Yeah, you could uh, share your screen right now. No, it doesn't work. Doesn't work? Do you have, uh, yeah, it's okay. So please start your talk. Oh, you should unmute your microphone, Maria. And Google Meet, yeah. Okay, yeah, sorry. Yeah, sorry for the inconvenience. We tried before and it worked perfectly and I don't know why it didn't work for the second time. Don't worry, uh, it's okay, please. Yeah. Go on. Uh, yeah, hi, everybody. Yeah, about, uh, patterns of polarity fields. Uh, and uh, I was thinking to start with all the tanks because I already have flowers on my first slide. Um, yeah, I would like to thank everyone for being here uh, on a Friday morning, afternoon, evening or night. Uh, and uh, speakers for the interesting talks, I really enjoyed them. Uh, I would also like to thank the organizers for the opportunity and also for doing all the work. And especially Edgar for letting me know about the whole event. Um, now let me come back to the flowers. I uh, want to make a point. Um, uh, flowers, like many other multicellular organisms, uh, represent uh, interesting uh, patterns and shapes. Um, the flowers or animals or uh, you know other uh, multicellular organisms uh, have different organs uh, that are uh, developed during the uh, development uh, and. Um, uh, they are like well-defined shape and structures that are formed by uh, collective um, uh, interaction and organizations of cells. It's a good example of out of equilibrium system and a self-organized system. Um, and uh, yeah, these structures are uh, usually uh, characterized by well-established sizes and shapes. Um, and uh, even if we zoom in in many systems we see that there are a lot of precise structures and patterns even on smaller scales for example in tissues which are uh, like 2d system uh, 2d sheets of cells uh, we can see a lot of uh, pattern formation going on and uh, i want to highlight the uh, formation of large scale um, uh, polarity uh, I mean, patterns of polarity fields in, in, in the tissues. Uh, here, for example, you can see the shoot apical meristem of plants where new organs are developed. Uh, it's a very important organ in plant. And you can see that, uh, I mean, all uh, the uh, cytoskeleton here, actin uh, filaments are aligned uh, very well and they form a very reproducible uh, pattern, um, which is important for the development. Uh, and, uh, of course, it's interesting to know how cells collectively organize to form such pattern. Uh, and um, if, let me first simplify the system and say what exactly uh, polarity means in, the, in such a system. It can be anisotropic distribution of molecules, for example, at one part of the cell, or the orientation of cy cytoskeleton filaments, or it can also be cell shape or other. Uh, uh, polarity can be uh, expressed by different by different cells. Um, this talk would be very theoretical. It, we were inspired by the pattern seen in plant tissues, uh, and uh, we were thinking of this theoretical model, and we found interesting results. Um, but but we didn't apply the model to uh, the system because of other complexities. Um, so. Uh, the model is like is similar to classical spin models, 
uh, on square lattices, uh, like uh, XY model. Uh, and we have like uh, at each uh, square, we have a polarity, which is defined by the orientation, like the XY model and uh, the magnitude here, uh, which can vary from one side to the other one. Um, and for the rest of the talk, I also show uh, the magnitude with um, a color code, um, just uh, to clarify it now. And uh, then we uh, use uh, a modified XY uh, energy for this system. We have interactions between neighbors, uh, the first term, uh, and uh, 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 we have also uh, we can also have coupling with an external field, which the, which in the case of uh, tissues can be like a signal from outside or some stress or I mean there are some candidates for that. This is very similar to XY model, but we consider um, the polarity magnitude uh, values. Uh, and then we consider dynamics of the system, and we have two different. We consider two different dynamics for the system for. Uh, polarity orientation, we assume a, a non-conserved dissipative uh, dynamic, um, like the first equation, uh, and we also have the noise term, which is like a white noise, uh, and uh, we, for the polarity magnitude, we assume the dynamics is much slower than the orientation, and therefore we consider a, a, tra a sort of transport between cells, which is like the B model for the con conserved uh, dissipative dynamics. Just very classical models, but different dynamics. And we also have diffusion, which is like uh, the noise term here and uh, connected to the temperature. Um, so uh, if we consider just the external field uh, at the beginning, there is no coupling between neighbors and we just rewrite the equations. Uh, I don't go into details, but you know, um, uh, just quite uh, uh, trivial calculation, uh, we see an interesting pattern. Here in the first figure, this one, uh, there is no transport between, transport possible between uh, cells, and also there is no diffusion. And you see when we start from uh, a, pol a polar, um, a, a, you know, a polarity distribution, here we start from non-uniform distribution, uh, actually uh, the polarity magnitude would stay constant at each side and the orientation at final temperature uh, would be random as we expect from xy model uh, you know for temperatures higher than zero uh, but when as soon as we start having this um, transform between neighbors uh, there are some sides uh, with high uh, polar uh, magnitude uh, they are formed and then they uh, in these sides, the polarity is aligned with the external field. However, everywhere else is very random, where the polarity magnitude is small. Um, of course, when we have uh, uh, diffusion, this can also stay. Uh, however, if we just have diffusion, we would have a un uniform um, uh, uh, polarity magnitude distribution all over the tissue. Uh, but uh, uh, everything would be random at final temperature. And uh, if we look at the um, um, order parameters, two order parameters, uh, uh, like Mariam, can, average, I ask you, can I ask you a question, please? Yes, sure. No, so could you go back to the previous slide? Yes. So did you look at the, uh, the spatial correl orientational correlations as well, you know, as a function of uh, distance between sites? Um, yeah, we look at it and actually, it, uh, uh, you know, uh, there is almost no correlation. You mean There's no correlation, even at low temperatures? Uh, no, it's not low. I mean, here there is like, it's the final temperature. Ah, okay. Yeah, ah, so, at low, okay, okay. okay. Yeah, at low temperature, at zero temperature, yeah, there is like, I mean, at zero temperature, everything is aligned with this. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, I understand, okay. Yeah, it's just the final temperature when it's above the uh, the transition yeah, of the X Y yeah, model. Okay. Uh, and we look at the order parameters. Uh, one is like uh, the classical one, which is defined also for the X Y model, the average alignment P one, 
and the other one we call the whole mag mag magnetism and it's like uh, multiplied by rho and we see that um, the average alignment um, when there is no transport it just both actually both uh, order parameters follow each other and they uh, it looks like the xy model however um, when we allow for the transport between neighbors uh, uh, the second um, uh, order parameter uh, persists for a while and then for i mean for a final temperature here they are plotted sorry as a function of temperature and then it drops to zero uh, so it's sort of like uh, Sorry, uh, only five minutes left. Oh, okay, yes. Uh, and then we can also look at the interactions with the neighbors. Uh, again, similar equation, and here there is no external fear. And uh, it's also interesting that um, uh, for such a system, we can uh, have, uh, uh, you know, this uh, 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 polarity, uh, islands we can also i mean they can also be established and these domains uh, where the polarity magnitude is high and where cells are aligned with each other however uh, outside these domains uh, the polarity um, orientation is uh, random as you can see in this system for a final temperature so within the uh, high polar polarity domain um, they are aligned. The, the, the coupling between um, um, the neighbors actually make them align. And when we increase temperature, as you can see in this uh, picture, um, uh, the, uh, mm, uh, the, um, the polar domains actually become bigger uh, and the number gets smaller. Uh, and after a temperature, a certain temperature, of course, we expect that it would have a very random um, uh, 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 di distribution of polarities uh, and here you can also look at the average domain size as a function of noise uh, or temperature and you see that for uh, different um, uh, in, in, in the constant of this um, uh, transport uh, it actually it's almost constant at the beginning but then near the transition point it increases and then uh, of course, it vanishes. Uh, yeah, now I just uh, uh, briefly summarize that uh, this model is like a very uh, modif uh, I mean, a very simple uh, model based on uh, modified XY model, but with the potential transport of uh, polarity particles. Um, uh, and this uh, simple model can express non-trivial um, uh, dynamics uh, in the system, uh, non-trivial uh, pattern formations. Uh, what actually I showed were like uh, equilibrium mistake. Uh, the results are published in this paper, and of course, I would like to thank uh, my collaborator RSK uh, for all the support, and also Christoph Godin. Uh, yeah, and thank you too. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, talk. We have a time for one or two questions. Any question? I, I have a question, maybe, uh, Ali? Yes, please. So, yeah, uh, uh, Mariam, can you go to your, uh, this, the slide where you have the patterns driven by interaction the, 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 yeah, the, the last the last slide to summarize. Oh, the summary. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Is there so so is there any uh, particular um, structure to these islands? So are they all of the same size always? Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, the sizes are very similar in the square lattice, uh, and uh, I mean here also the diffusion is not that big. It also depends on the diffusion. Uh, but uh, yeah. So if there was the if there was more if there was more diffusion, then you would expect a broader distribution of uh, shapes, I guess. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, and, but, uh, but the the square the square shape is basically uh, imposed by the square lattice. Uh, yes. Exactly. Yeah. And uh, okay. as you see uh, here, uh, it's not a square anymore because uh, at least 
uh, at this temperature diffusion uh, is smoothing the the border somehow okay and i'm just wondering in the such kind of the models the polarity models uh, do you have something like a custard list tallest that we can see that's in the uh, two-dimensional uh, model the other vector vectorial two-dimensional model you can you see the custard list tallest transition um uh, yeah i mean that's like uh that's like the first one right mm -hmm. isn't it like at zero temperature is I actually, I, I'm not sure. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure if I remember correctly the name of uh, the transition, but it's like the, the zero temperature transition, right? Mm, not, not yeah. zero. The catalyst is, is some kind of the topological uh, transition that we have something in the Heisenberg, the um, two-dimensional uh, spin models. Well, actually, there is no order below uh, temperature. I mean, between, below because uh, is critical temperature. So I'm not yes. sure if it's the same. Yeah, but I should look at it because, yeah, I mean, I'm not from the field of condensed matter. Uh, yeah, so um, if I know, I mean, I, I look at a few different uh, mm -hmm. transitions, but now I don't have in mind actually which one. Okay. Yeah, but, but did you say that at zero temperature, they're all ordered or? Uh, yes, yeah, I mean, at zero temperature, uh, oh, okay. they all so order going going on. On. Okay. Yeah, so we have like uh, the classical, as you can see here in order of parameters, we have the classical transition. Uh, I mean, it's a change, of course. Uh, okay. Uh, but we have a transition at zero temperature, but we have another one. But mm -hmm. the pictures of the patterns are basically in some steady state. I didn't get this or... And the, the the ones I showed are steady states, oh, yeah, exactly. Okay. And because there is no diffusion, they don't uh, kind of approach anymore to each other, or uh, um, yes, yeah. They're I mean, always. It seems also that the distance between each uh, kind of island is uh, more or less similar, so they are homogeneously exactly. spread. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Also, when we do like a sort of analytical calculation, we can see that uh, um, I'm interested to study the. Uh, case where diffusion is higher and also uh, considering the the full random diffusion model i think uh, yeah should be okay thanks yeah, thank you okay